So we've been looking at different things about God and how great he is, and we're going to go to Isaiah today, chapter 45, to start. We've looked at God as being loving and giving and forgiving, and that's the way God is. He's just a great God, and he loves us so much. So we're going to start in Isaiah 45. It says some things here. God says, by way of Isaiah, in verse 18, For thus saith the Lord, that created the heavens, God himself that formed the earth and made it, he hath established it, he created it not in vain. And remember that, you know, in uh, Genesis 1, 2, it says, and the earth became without form and void. And that word vain is the same word as void. Uh, he didn't create it in vain, uh, without form. He formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord and there is none else. I have not spoken in secret. In a dark place of the earth, I said not unto the seed of Jacob, seek ye me in vain, I, the Lord, speak righteousness. I declare things that are right. Assemble yourselves and come and draw near together. Ye that are escaped of the nations, they have no knowledge that set up the wood of their graven image and pray unto a God that cannot save. Tell ye and bring them near. Yea, let them take counsel together. Who hath declared this from the ancient time? Who hath told it from that time? Have not I the Lord, and there is no God else besides me? A just God and a Savior, there is none beside me. Look unto me, and be ye saved, all the ends of the earth. For I am the God, and there is none else. You know, that, that's a great thing to just think about. He's the creator of the heavens and the earth. He made it. He created it. He formed it. He did all that stuff. And, and he's the Savior. He's the one that gives us the answers for everything. You know, so many times we look in so many places for answers, for deliverance, for salvation. And, of course, the ultimate salvation is through Jesus Christ, God's Son, right? But we have seen that God is light. He is love, he is giving, he is righteous, he's the father of mercies, he's the God of all comfort, and he's the God of peace. We've seen all those things the last couple of weeks. Uh, we're going to go to Colossians. So what a great God we have, right? Colossians chapter 3. And verse 15, it says, And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which ye also are called in one body, and be ye thankful. And it should be, let the peace of um, Christ rule in your hearts, is how it reads in the Greek. Um, and the word uh, to rule um, is kind of an interesting word. It's the word that could be translated literally umpire. Um, but it, it means to be uh, the decider uh, in everything. Uh, it directs or controls. So let the peace of God rule in your hearts. Let that be the deciding factor in what you do. Kind of cool, huh? <clears throat> And then it says, and be thankful. Well, we'll read the whole thing. Let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also you're called in one body, and be thankful. And you know, we learn all these things about God, about his love, about his giving, about how he's light, how he never lies to us. And our great, and you know, the only thing we really need to be is thankful. I mean, that's, first and foremost, we need to be thankful all the time. Um, we have no reason not to be thankful. Then it goes on in verse 16, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts 
to the Lord or to God should be how it reads. Um, you know, we need to remind each other about God. We need to, you know, tell each other how great God is and, and what he's done for us and that we are to be thankful all the time. You know, we all have things in life where, you know, some days just turn to crap, right? <laughs> but we still should be thankful because of all God's done to us, for us. And, you know, in the scheme of things, in the whole perspective of things, this world is just, you know, an ink spot in the whole eternity. And we're going to spend the great majority of our existence in eternity with God and with Jesus Christ. So when you think about it that way, it's nice to be thankful. Goes on and says in verse 17, And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. So twice it tells us to be thankful. You know, twice. Be thankful. It's a very important thing to be thankful. You know, we should have peace because we're saved. You know, no matter what happens, you're going to heaven. Uh, I think we read in Ezekiel, I think I read it at one point where it talks about how God, you know, the sinner turns back to righteousness and he's saved and, and the, the righteous man turns to sin and he dies. And then God says, I have no pleasure in death. You know, no matter what you do in your life, no matter where you go, if you turn back to God, his arms are always open, right? They're always open to us. We make mistakes, we do stupid things, but we can always turn back to him, and we should just always stay thankful. <clears throat> and let's go to Romans. Chapter 1. And this is really interesting. The first part of Romans, you know, is a declaration of, of, you know, Paul is a servant of Jesus Christ, and he talks about the gospel of God concerning Jesus Christ. And, and in verse 16, he talks about not being ashamed of the gospel and the power of God uh, unto salvation to those that believe. And the righteousness of God is revealed from believing to believing. And then in verse 18, it starts talking about natural man or, or mankind in general. And it says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. And, you know, basically that's, that's the history of the world uh, most people, the majority of people, hold the truth in unrighteousness. Uh, God's people have always been in a minority. It's not God's desire, right? God's desire is for all men to be saved and come unto a knowledge of the truth. But most people in the world hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him, of God, from the creation of the world, are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even as eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. So, you know, just a, a clear look at the creation is obvious that there is a God. They have no excuse. You know, whether they've ever read a Bible or not, there's no excuse. It's kind of interesting when you think about it. Uh, I don't think he was a very religious man, but Einstein, just because of his knowledge of the stars in the universe, said there has to be a God. You know, he just, he couldn't deny it. He couldn't remember his own address, but he could remember that. So... <clears throat> Then it goes on in verse 21, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, 
but became vain in their imaginations and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. And see, they were not thankful. You know, the, the, to be unthankful is, is always going to take you away from God. To be unthankful is always going to not be a blessing. It's going gonna, it's gonna to take you to places you don't want to go. You know, God says that we should always be thankful. So it doesn't talk about situations or circumstances or, but our knowledge of God, the more that we have a knowledge of God, the more we see of him, the more we know of him, the more we understand him, the more thankful we should be, regardless of anything else. Um, we know better than the average person that holds the truth in unrighteousness. We know the love of God. We know what he's done for us, how he sent his son. We know the salvation that he's given us, and we know the peace of God, uh, and we should be thankful. Let's go to Psalm 100. Psalm 100, probably all of sang this one time, but we're just going to read the last couple of verses, three through five. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves, we are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Now this is the Old Testament, you know, and it talks about his people as being the sheep of his pastor, pasture, um, <clears throat> where his children... It says, enter into his gates with what? Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. And into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For, and the reason why we should be thankful, the reason why we should praise him. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth to all generations. And you know, one time... Some guy came up to Jesus Christ in the gospel and said, good master, and he said, only God is good, right? God is, is the definition of good. He's the epitome of good. He is good. His mercy is everlasting. You know, it never stops. His desire to help us and to aid us and, and do his best for us is, is there all the time. No matter what our situation, I, I know, well, I don't know this, I can't document this, but I know that when we get to heaven, when we uh, come to the place of being perfect in the sight of God, um, when we have the understanding, when we're going to be as he is, we're going to look back and we're going to say, wow, if I had just taken one more step, I would have got the deliverance. Or... Look at what God did for me. I didn't even realize. You know, we're going to see things and understand things. It's going to be mind-blowing. It's going to be like, wow, how dopey was I? Because we are. We're not, you know, we're really not that smart. We think we are. But we're really about half as smart as we think we are. Maybe a quarter. What a great God. For the, God, for the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. His truth endureth to all generations. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. It's always easy to get to Ephesians. My Bible just kind of opens there. Uh, <clears throat> chapter 2, verse 4, it says, But God, who is rich in mercy for his great love, wherewith he loved us. You know, and the word great there is the word mega, which means great. His great love. He didn't just love us with any old love or with, ordinary love, with great love he loved us. 
even when we were, what? Dead in sins. You know, he loved us when we were basically unlovable. Even when we were dead in sins, he loved us with a great love and hath quickened us together with Christ by grace you're saved and hath raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Well, that's pretty great. We're seated in the heavenlies in Christ Jesus. That in the ages to come, which is the great expanse of time forever, eternity, in the ages to come, the eons, <clears throat> he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. So I guess it's going to take God eternity to show his kindness and his love for us. You know? says we're blessed with all spiritual blessings. You know, some of the things that God says in his word, you know, we read them, we say, oh, isn't that great? But if you sit and think about it for a while, it's almost overwhelming. It's incomprehensible how great God is and how much he loves us, you know, and the promises that he gives us. You know, it's going to take him eternity to show his exceeding kindness and grace towards us. Can you really understand that? No. No, but you know, you think about it and you think, wow, we have a lot to look forward to. We really have a lot to be thankful for. You know, that's, that's you know, in, in Romans it says, I reckon that the present suffer the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared to the glory that will be revealed in us. You know, meaning all the things we go through now they're nothing. They're just, you know, we'll look back and we'll, you ever look back when you were a kid and there was something that just, you know, you, you thought was the worst thing in the world and then you look back and you go, boy, that was stupid, wasn't it? It's just, that's life, right? You know, in retrospect, a lot of things that we thought were uh, insurmountable insurmountable or going to ruin our lives passed away or passed by and we moved on and we li we live we continue to live we continue to get god's blessings and be you know live life and bless others let's go to deuteronomy so i guess the theme of this all is what a great god we have and we should be thankful Chapter 10 of Deuteronomy, in verse 17. This is a great little thing here, a great verse. It says, for the Lord your God is God of gods. <laughs> well, you can't get any better than that. And the Lord of lords, a great God, a mighty and a terrible which regardeth not persons, nor taketh reward. And the word terrible there means awesome. It doesn't mean terrible like horrible or bad, but it means awesome. He is awesome. He's an awesome God. He's the God of gods and the Lord of lords, a great God, mighty and awesome, which regardeth not persons, nor taketh reward. Meaning he's not a respecter of persons, right? He... he he sees us all the same way. And when you're born again, what, how does he see us? He sees us as his children, his sons and daughters. He sees us as perfect and without blame before him in love. He sees us as being unreprovable, you know, that we're just perfect in every way. What a great thing. Let's go to Psalm 47. And verse 1, 
It says, oh, clap your hands, all ye people. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph, for the Lord most high is terrible, or awesome. He is a great king over all the earth. Well, that's a great statement about God. I mean, there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of great statements about God. You know, we read previously, weeks before, about God is love. You know, he loved us before we loved, he loved, he loved us before we ever loved him. It says that God is light and him is no darkness. You know, he's just that kind of God. Let's go to 96. It's almost comical how sometimes people say, oh God, he's so mean or why did he do this? Or why did he do that? And then you read in the word and you see what a loving God he really is. And what a kind and caring God he is. And how he's our father. And you know, <clears throat> what a great privilege to be his children. Psalm 96, verse 1. Oh, sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord all the earth. Sing unto the Lord, bless his name, show forth his salvation from day to day. What did we just read in Colossians, sing and, you know, praise God and sing. And it says it in Ephesians, we're to sing and do psalms and bless him. Well, here it just says, sing unto the Lord, bless his name, show forth his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the heathen, his wonders among all people. You know, we have the great privilege and honor of doing that because we live among heathens. You, know, you don't think of people as heathens, maybe, but we do. We live among heathens. I mean, just all you have to do is watch the news for one half hour, and you know that we live among heathens. You know, the stupid stuff that goes on in the world and, and the lies and the corruption, it's just overwhelming. But we have God. And with God, you know, we just continue to move forward and know that we're blessed and that he'll take care of us. But we can declare the greatness of God and his glory to the heathen and his wonders to all people, you know. And every one of us has something we can say about God and what he's done in our life. Yeah. He's blessed us all. He's taken care of us. He's, he loves us. For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the nations are idols. But the Lord made the heavens. He made the universe. You know, and you say, well, you know, and you... They used to have idols. Well, they still have idols. Our, our country is full of false idols. You, you know, you may not think of them that way, but they are. Um, in New Jersey, if you go on the turnpike, there's a, if you look, there's somewhere, getting close to New Brunswick, there's this gigantic Hindu temple. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, and it's, it's got all their false gods and their statues and icons and all the other stuff. <clears throat> so God made the universe. Honor and majesty are before him, verse 6. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Give unto the Lord, O you kindreds of the people. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Wow, that's cool. You know. Give God the glory that he, he is due. Well, you know, you could just glorify him every day, all day long. You'll never give him all that he's due. But, you know, do your best. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of his holiness. 
fear before him or, you know, reverence before him, all the earth. Say among the heathen that the earth, uh, say among the heathen that the Lord reigneth. The world also shall be established and it shall not be moved. He shall judge the people righteously. That's pretty cool in itself, that he judges righteously. And the great thing is we're born again, so we've already been judged righteous. You know, that's his righteous judgment, that when you confess Jesus as Lord and believe in your hearts that God raised from the dead, you are righteous. You're justified. That's his righteous judgment. Let the heavens rejoice and the earth be glad. Let the sea roar and the fullness thereof. Let the field be joyful and all that is therein. Then shall all the trees of the woods rejoice. <laughs> that's kind of interesting. I, I was talking to a guy that's in, involved with science, and he said there's scientific, you know, they study the trees, that the trees communicate with one another. I don't know what that means, or how they find, how could they figure it out, but anyway, he told me that. I said, okay, that's interesting. <laughs> if they do, great. Verse 13, before the Lord... For he cometh, for he cometh to judge the earth. He shall judge the world with righteousness and the people with his truth. That's pretty great. The few, you know, 11 through 13 seems to have to do with the future, doesn't it? Because God is going to come back and actually he gave Jesus Christ the authority to judge everything. So how great is our God? He has given us a great salvation, all eternity, and everlasting inheritance. He watches over us. He meets our every need. He hears our every prayer. That's what he does. So we should respond with thanksgiving. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 5. Chapter 5, verse 18. And it says in verse 18, And be not drunk with wine, where is an excess, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So, you know, we're to give thanks. We're to speak to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. You know, you ever catch yourself singing or praising God or, you know, just speaking in tongues? You don't even realize it all of a sudden. You know, we're, that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to keep God in our hearts and in our minds and be praising him and, and singing to him and being blessed. Giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. All things. All things. No matter what it is, we're to give thanks to all things. Let's go to Colossians chapter 1. Verse 9, it says, For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you. And this is a prayer in the beginning of, of Colossians. It's God's prayer for saints, for believers. We cease not to pray for you and desire that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that you might, might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might, according to his glorious power, unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness, giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet or adequate to be partakers of the inheritance 
of the saints in light. So that's God's prayer for us. We're to, we're to have that knowledge of God and, and to walk with God and have the patience and the long-suffering with joyfulness, giving thanks unto God. Remembering that he made us, he made us adequate or meet to be the uh, partakers of the inheritance. You know, we didn't do it. He did it. He made us that way. What a great God. And then in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, it says, Be careful for nothing, or be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving. 4, 6. With thanksgiving, let your supplications... and. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. You know, it's, it, it, when we're thankful, we're going to be blessed. You know, when we get unthankful, it takes you to a bad place. And if you keep remembering all that God has done for you, all that he will do for you, what a great and loving God he is and has been and always will be, it's easy to stay thankful. You know, because it just, it's throughout the Word. You just read the Word and you go, wow, what a God. Why aren't I more thankful? Mm -hmm. You know? Sometimes in the morning when I, when I eat breakfast, you know, and I, I pray for my food. And I'm usually, before Stella gets up, and I just, you know, I just say, okay, God, I really want to be thankful for this food that you bless it to my body, but I really want to be thankful today, and I really want to understand how to be more thankful. And, and I pray that sometimes because it's important. It's a really important thing. So we go into this week, and it's Thanksgiving, and it's my favorite, it's my favorite holiday because it was all about thanking God. You know, all the other holidays are just kind of, Dopey. I mean, they're fun, you know, you can have fun with your family and everything. But Thanksgiving really was to be thankful to God. It wasn't, it wasn't instituted by God, but it was instituted by God-fearing people, people that loved God, and they were really, truly thankful for how he had delivered them and taken care of them. So it's a great time of year, and it's a great time to speak God's word and, and let people know that you're thankful. Because, you know, there's a lot of negativity out there. And not just with the heathen, but even believers sometimes. And we can be a positive influence to everybody.